Welcome to GetRubix.com. I'm Steve Weiner, Principal Architect. Today we're going to be talking about Windows 11 and Autopilot. Now it should be the same as Windows 10, but it's not. Some have told me it's a fresh coat of paint on Windows 10. It looks that way, but it's actually not the truth. So we're going to walk through a really standard Autopilot deployment and with a Windows 11 virtual machine and see what that looks like. Right. So before we get started, we're going to talk about a few things we have set up and, and how we have it set that way. So let's take a look here. Um, let me minimize this window. Okay, so Hyper-V Lab. Uh, I'm going to throw up a link uh, to one of the posts we did on kind of really how to get this all tuned in. Uh, we have a pretty good uh, Hyper-V setup, right? I use PowerShell scripts to kind of just uh, mount different versions of ISOs. So right here we have... Um, if we take a look, we have a uh, VM that was created for uh, running through this process, right? Windows 11 ISO, we do bake some stuff into the VM. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the way we have the VM set up. All right, so you see it's a uh, Windows 11 virtual machine, the desktop, a uh, few things just wanna call out, uh, function shift F10, right? That'll pull up the command prompt. We're gonna go ahead and uh, hit PowerShell I just want to show you, we have uh, get installed modules, get installed module, sorry. Uh, all my VMs we use for autopilot testing have Azure AD, uh, the Microsoft Graph uh, for Intune module, and Windows Autopilot Intune, right? We also have some scripts. We have obviously the get Windows Autopilot info that will allow us to register our device in autopilot. And we have the get autopilot a get autopilot diagnostics in case we need it. In this case, hopefully we won't if everything goes okay. And we're all set there. I've also been uh, essentially loading a local user, uh, an admin user. You can see I have this, uh, here, let's blow this up a little. I got this local admin user I put in. I set the password, put it in the admin group. Uh, especially if we're testing autopilot deployment profiles that suppress the admin to just be a standard user, we need a way to get in and uh, sometimes troubleshoot some things. So it's a really easy way to do that. You just bake this all into your ISO and then use that to create the create the VMs. So we should be all set there. The machine is, is registered. Um, I named the machine uh, with the, you can see here, it's a uh, Rubix Windows 11 7199. So as always, let's go ahead into our, uh, let's turn it off for a second. Let's go ahead into Intune. Okay, endpoint manager, whatever you're comfortable calling it. It seems to depend on the day. Uh, 7199 is my machine. So I have tested it before, but like I always say, want to make sure a device is ready. It has an uh, associated Azure AD device ID. It does not have an Intune device ID. So this guy is ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire it off, and then I'm going to show you how we have the configuration, and we'll just take some notes about the experience, right? Uh, the VM, of course, is hardwired to the Ethernet, so I'm not going to see the Wi-Fi prompt. It's just going to take me right through um, the out-of-box experience. We'd we'll love to know your thoughts on this part. Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a fresh coat of paint. Uh, I think I'm a bad, uh, I'm a bad judge of this. I've spent so long looking at the uh, Windows 10 out of box experience working on the early days of autopilot and Intune and testing and testing and testing all these machines. I remember being like surrounded by surfaces. At one point. I'll try to throw the pickup if I can find it. Uh, the point was all I saw was that blue screen. Let's just uh, go ahead and log in and then we'll take a look at some other things here. So this is my uh, lab environment. Little Rick and Morty banner. Um, if you're not having fun, why are you doing what you're doing, right? Um, yes, my GA account is called Groove Master. It's uh, well, actually, you know what? No, let's not do a GA. Let's do a. I think I just want to show you guys that I have that called Groove Master because I get a kick out of it. Let's use Rick Jones. Who's Rick Jones? No idea. It's a one of the demo names I got used to using. And it just stuck from there. Um, so we'll sign in. Pretty sure I have MFA turned on. Of course I do. 
I'm not a giant fan of MFA and my tenant. To me, that's like somebody asking you for a key to use the bathroom in your own house. But you know what? It's for security, and we got to keep to our zero trust principles. So we'll keep that MFA turned on. All right. So what do we have to do for Windows 11? Um, so how do we have it set? Let's take a quick look at the autopilot profile. Nothing new here. This is our Azure AD join profile. We still have our naming convention. We're suppressing the admin user. We're allowing pre-provisioning. Of course, it's Azure AD join. We're going to talk more about it in some upcoming screencasts, but here's the thing. Don't do hybrid join. It's, I would say it's coming to the end of its life if it ever actually had a life. It's been in private preview for, uh, not private preview. It's been public preview, right, for so long. Um, is it going to go GA? Are they going to deprecate it? I don't know, but no one seems to have a good experience with it. So please, 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 if you think you need to hyper join, reevaluate that Azure AD to Azure AD join a device in your tenant as a test, see where the gaps are guaranteed. The level of effort required to address the gaps is going to be well worth it because it's going to give you a way better experience. Um, folks who do the hyper join with autopilot tend to just go back and say, well, let's do Azure AD. Um, enough about that. I'll, I'll complain more about it in an upcoming screencast. And we can even look at how to do it. I'll show you. Um, sometimes it's good to see for yourself, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what else we have. Of course, we have our enrollment status page. I have my standard one. Um, very little reason you would need more than one. But again, something we could talk about it. I love my aggressive timeout here. You can see I have it set for 30, right? 30 minutes. I know that this in my lab enrollment takes 10 minutes at most. I mean, we're doing it now. You could probably count um, just to show you that it's actually going. We're at ESP. We're on device prep. So we can see it's actually still going on. Um, yeah. So 30 minutes is my little aggressive ego trip of a limit. Um, what are we waiting for though? Not a whole lot, right? Um, we have this nailed down to autopilot branding, right? Um, I'll throw a link up if you're not familiar with autopilot branding, probably one of the best things uh, you can do in a in a Windows autopilot deployment. Uh, it's Michael Niehaus's package that he created, a uh, collection of PowerShell scripts, uh, XML. Uh, essentially the whole idea is you're setting a lot of default preferences and customizations because we're not imaging anymore. Uh, I'm waiting for office. It's click to run XML. So it's going to be fairly quick. And then I have something cool. I'm going to show you. It's called a toast notifications package. We'll take a look at that in a minute though. You can see here we've completed device prep and we are on device setup. So one thing I will say here in windows 11, that's important to call out for whatever reason, it'll hang on identifying a little bit longer than it should. Uh, sometimes it'll kick in at two to three apps left to go. So it'll totally won't show me when it's already done the one, but you know, that's okay. Um, just something to be aware of. Some folks have said to me, well, it's taken a long time. It's not actually taking a long time. I think it's just uh, the way that mechanism works in Windows 11. But again, it's new, right? It's still new. They'll probably address it in a future build. So I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. Right, a few settings that I would recommend everyone sets. I might have clicked device twice there. Um, anyway, I still have my enrollment settings. Okay, and you'll see these uh, take effect soon. Uh, what are the enrollment settings and why am I doing them here? One is in the catalog, the settings catalog, but um, it's easier to group them together like this. Um, if both of these are in the catalog now, let me know and I'll happily uh, change it. We're disabling the user ESP. So if you flip back for a second, you probably notice we're at device setup. ESP has three parts, right? It's got preparation, device setup, and the account setup. We skip the account setup. We don't have a lot going on there. It tends to slow down the ESP and in my opinion, doesn't always work that great. So we, we do skip that, right? <laughs> Yeah, so we you see it skipped the ESP. Ah, now what's this here? So we're at the login screen. I want to show you what one of those settings meant. Let me go ahead and sign in as Rick here, Rick Jones. Okay. Okay, so right here, you see preparing for Windows. The reason you see preparing for Windows is because we're skipping the first login animation. Normally that's that strobe, like, hey, we're getting everything ready for you. We're getting it set up. In our experience, businesses tend not to like that, 
right? That tends to be, um, I mean, I'm sure it's aimed at consumers. Uh, I did mention we're pushing this toast notification package. You can see it uh, down here, toast notifications. Um, so what that is, is we're suppressing all the other applications built in toast notifications and we're kind of do we're going to we're going to do a special general overall notification there's kind of here let's blow this up a little bit i get this hero image that pops up welcome to your new device we're downloading some applications but feel free to use outlook or browse the web we'll let you know when you're all set up so you could put a corporate logo here a little picture um it, it, it's pretty cool so i'm going to dismiss this and the idea is that um, if we take a look back, no one needs to see Teams auto launch. We're, I think we're all kind of sick of that. If you take a look at all these apps I'm pushing, Chrome, uh, Firefox, Notepad, Slack, those weren't part of my ESP, right? So they wouldn't be there by the time I'm at the desktop. They don't need to be, right? They're going to come down later. Um, now, if you want something there, it's fine. We just have to remember we're balancing that ESP, right? How much do we need there before the users on the desktop versus what's a good experience? Because if you think about it now, I'm a user. I receive this, right? I can do things. I can, you know, I have my office suite installed. I can start using that. I have Teams. I have the web. Um, let's... Um, let's talk about Teams for a moment. So one of the things about Windows 11 that so far nobody likes is this retail uh, Teams product, which is chat, I think they call it. Um, and how do we get rid of it, right? Uh, well, you'll notice it's not here. No, we just have the enterprise Teams. Uh, the reason it's not here is because of this registry key that I will show you, software, Microsoft. I know I could type this, but I just feel like scrolling. Current version, communications. Take a look at this key, configure chat auto install. If it's zero, it gets rid of it. It's not there. And we're setting another key to kind of hide it from the bar. The reason this is kind of a big deal, uh, not a big deal. It was just kind of a pain to get out there because uh, apparently at least in Windows 11, this key is protected by the trusted installer permission. Um, if we take a look back for a second, you could see I had to push a script, uh, remove, well, we have the task bar one, uninstall chat retail teams, right? So uh, what that's doing for us is that's actually uh, deploying during ESP because it's PowerShell script, it's gonna hit before the apps and it's gonna set that registry for us. It just was kind of... And there we go. Your device has finished installing all applications. Um, I got a little help desk uh, email here. If I want to contact someone, we could probably put a link in there. I can dismiss, or I got the company portal option. You know, click below to find additional programs available to download at the company portal. So it's a nice little guided welcome message for for new employees. Um, and I'm going to close that because I don't have apps available yet. But it does take me to the company portal. So real quick. I guess that's going to do it for today. So thanks for joining me. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and we will talk soon.